All right, so welcome to another episode of uh, Camaro Restoration, and this is episode number 14. And in this episode, we're going to try to get the uh, safely get the coil springs out of this car and keep working towards the goal of removing the subframe. So we got a lot of work to do. Let's get into it. So there's never really been a time that I've worked on these old cars where I haven't, uh, you know, had blood, sweat, and tears into the project. So it's just kind of part of it. All right, so the disassembly of the front end of the car has started, and essentially at this point, I've just got the tires off. I've got the uh, brake calipers off. Kind of see that there, just they're just kind of hanging uh, by the hose, and I've got the rotors off uh, to get that cleaned up a little bit, or the to get all that out of the way, I guess I should say, uh, to be able to get into the disassembly of these control arms and to get those coil springs out of there. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this steering box off. There's three bolts there that hold it. I put that steering box on so those should come right out and then I've got to try to uh, dislodge the uh, steering shaft where it connects to the steering column kind of in that mess there and in the process of I've got the bolt loose uh, but in the process of uh, prying on that thing that's how I cut my finger but uh, you know part of the deal. All right, so I've got everything off the front end and it is time to uh, remove this coil spring. And this part's, um, it's dangerous and you gotta be really careful with that spring. There's a lot of compression and a lot of pressure on that spring. And if you're not careful, it's gonna wanna shoot out this way. Um, and it can shoot out with some uh, pretty tremendous force. Now they say to use spring compressors as the safest way to do this, but I've seen videos where spring compressors break and the other way to do it, the other method, I guess, and there's probably several other others, but uh, the one I'm going to use is going to be to put the floor jack under that lower control arm right there, undo that castle nut, and I'll show you that in more detail in just a second, and then break that top ball joint or the upper ball joint, and then slowly let this thing down and take the pressure off that spring that way. So however you guys decide to do this, just, uh, <laughs> hey, Jake. <laughs> Don't mind me, buddy. <laughs> How can you get mad at that face? So every, however, however you guys decide to do this, uh, just be careful when you're doing it. I've got the advantage of not having an engine in here, so I can stand kind of actually where the floor jack is and let the floor jack down over here um, from over there. Because I think if it's going to shoot out, it's going to shoot out this way and certainly not going to probably go back towards the frame rails where the engine compartment is. So just be safe however you do it. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to be careful and uh, let's hope I get this thing off safely. All right, so the first thing I have to do is remove this shock and there's uh, a 9 16 bolt there on the top and then underneath, and I'll show you that in a second, I believe there's two half inch bolts. So let's go ahead and take this top one off. Well, uh, that's not a good start. This thing is just uh, just spinning. So, I guess we'll start with the bottom and see what happens. All right there's the uh, two bottom bolts. Let's see if these come off. No problem that that one. No problem with that one either. Well, I got the shock out, and basically after loosening the bottoms, the two half inch on the bottom, um, and just kept spinning this one, and then pressing up against this top part with a uh, pry bar to put some tension on it, eventually I got it to, got the nut off those threads. Look at that. I think this thing was about shot or what? Jeez. <laughs> Wow. 
All right. All right there's a little more light to it. And there's the uh, castle nut that I'm going after. And underneath all that dirt is a uh, cotter pin. And I'm going to remove that cotter pin now. All right, so I should have filmed that. But uh, basically, I straightened out the ends. And then I got a grip on the head of the cotter pin. And then what I like to do is just twist like this instead of trying to pull straight out. I just kind of twist and use the pressure against the nut there and it will come out and you can see what it looks like. It's kind of twisted around the head of the pliers but that was kind of the intent and hey it's out of there. All right so we're getting close. I'm gonna uh, go get my floor jack and put it under here under the lower control arm and then I'm gonna loosen this and there's a lot of dirt on this one. Let me try to clean that off a little bit. All right, so I got my floor jack under here, but it is not all the way. It's not pressing up against that lower control arm. And there's a reason that I'm leaving a slight gap there. And the reason is, and the reason is, is because this castle nut, you can kind of see it better now. I wired, wired, wire brushed it down. I'm going to loosen this until it's about even with those threads, right? So when it's about flush to that bolt, and that's going to give me about three sixteenths of an inch to break this ball joint free, but yet still be supported by the floor jack down here. So I need to have a little bit of wiggle room for that, but not much, just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that nut, and then I'll break that uh, ball joint. All right, so you see that little tiny gap there. I'm gonna put my pickle fork in here, break that ball joint, and then it's gonna still catch on this nut because it's just flush with those threads. And then I've got my floor jack positioned right under here so this thing can't uh, come come out all right now watch real close in the video and you should be able to see it move just a little bit all right so I hope that came out in the video but there's no more gap there and you can clearly see where I broke that uh, ball joint uh, broke that connection there between the spindle and the ball joint. So now I'm going to put some pressure on this lower control arm and I already did that and you can see, well you can't see because of that light, but you can kind of see it's already just kind of lifting the car up. And the reason that it's doing that is obviously because I don't have a motor in here or anything to kind of help weigh it down. But the other one did this as well and the only thing that happened when I took this nut out was this kind of dropped and kind of fell forward a little bit. You've still got the tension of the spring um, on that control arm. So next step is to undo that castle nut all the way and then slowly let this jack down. And again, while I'm doing that, I'm going to stand over in this area here and hopefully it doesn't uh, spring out and go this way. It'll probably take out my camera if it does. <laughs> So uh, this is the, uh, you know, this is the, the tense part here. Um, but the last, the first one that I did went, went really, really well. And so far this one's going exactly the same. So just got to take your time and be careful. All right, I just got back from uh, changing my drawers because that scared the living you know what out of me. And uh, that one went, you know, according to plan. Uh, the problem is with no weight in the front of the car, um, I think I jacked up on the lower control arm a little bit too much and it lifted kind of when, when that top uh, control arm broke, broke free, it kind of popped and it didn't have anywhere to go but up. So it went up, which wasn't a huge deal, but as I began to let the, the jack down uh, to release the tension on the spring, it was barely on uh, that jack stand. 
So that jack stand uh, was not, it was, um, it was hanging by a thread. So this whole side of the car, I guess, was in danger of falling down. So I got the floor jack real quick, jacked it up on the cross member, and, you know, fixed the, fixed the floor jack, the position of that, and then let the tension off of, the rest of the tension off the spring um, by using the pry bar. And this one was a real bear to get out. Uh, the other one on the other side um, came out real easy. Just a couple of tugs on the uh, pry bar. This one was really in there. And you can see all that stuff in there just accumulates. I can't believe there's not any rust in there. But it's probably because there's some oil and grease and stuff from the engine. But uh, anyways, there it is. So now I'm going to take off the upper control arm there, the lower control arm, and uh, get all this stuff out of the way. Alright, so you can kind of see what I did here. I pried that uh, control arm up, and that gives you access to the two bolts there. I believe that's a uh, 13 sixteenths, one there, one there, and then on the other side is a uh, three quarter. I'm going to go ahead and take this off, and then I'm going to get the bottom off, and it's held on by the bolt there and then the nut is over here same thing on this side oh, it's not showing up too well and you get that off and then you can work that lower control arm free as well all right one thing to take note of before you remove these is there's a shim I don't know if you can see it right there in between that long bolt and the uh, piece that's welded to the fender where this control arm mounts so there's one shim there, and then on this side, there's no shim. And on this side, I had two shims in the back bolt, and I had one shim in the front bolt right there. So just make note of those before you take this apart. So when you put it back together, you can put in the right amount of shims. Alright, so this is where I'm at right now. Um, I've got to take off those uh, some brake lines and I've got some fuel lines over here to get off and then I think we'll be able to get that subframe out of there, um, hopefully coming up soon. Wanted to show you guys this as well. This is a uh, three quarter inch, you know, uh, ratcheting wrench, or it was a ratcheting wrench. And uh, when I was taking the uh, upper control arm off right there, it was actually on the other side over here. but. Uh, it broke under the strain of the impact um, and you know just disappointed with craftsmen I grew up with craftsmen and uh, you know they're just not what they used to be and it's unfortunate all right one thing I did do off camera was I did remove the uh, ball joints and the ball joints don't look terrible uh, but these are the upper and lower control arm bushings and and the bump stops these <laughs> these are the bump stops here and all I can say is uh, damn these things, uh, man, I'm, I'm glad I'm replacing them all. But I got them out, so that's uh, another thing that's checked off the list. All right, so that's going to do it for this Camaro restoration episode. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to get the subframe out, but uh, not yet. So this took, uh, took me a little bit longer uh, because the, with the coil springs, I was being very careful. So um, hopefully the next episode uh, we'll be able to get the subframe out and see what that thing looks like. I can already tell it looks pretty good. It's just dirty and greasy and needs to be cleaned up. And I'm so excited about getting that thing out of there, getting it cleaned up, getting it painted. It's going to look great. All right, so thanks for checking out the video. Really appreciate you guys, uh, your support of the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.